Okay, let's get started. Dear Lord, thank you for yesterday. At the cross now, facing all my sins, you know half of them, I don't know what they were. But I know I couldn't make it through yesterday without doing some sin. And I'm sorry for that. Now we're going through the devotions. It was something that will stick with us throughout the remainder of the day. Keep your blessings, Lord. I ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, let's get started. May I, whatever we ask. May 9th, 2020. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. But if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 1 John 5.14 Brian Campbell, Campbell tells of three ministers, James Philip, George Philip, and William Still, who prayed in the 1950s for God to revive the Church of Scotland and to raise up ministers. After four years of firm and joint intercession, they felt released from their burden of prayer, but they saw little evidence of genuine revival. Twenty-five years later, these same three ministers hosted a conference attended by about 200 pastors. One of the three men who had prayed for revival as for a show of hands by those who had converted during the initial years when he and his partners were praying. A number raised their hands. Then he asked how many of the remaining ministers had been born during those four years. Most of the others now raised their hands. Champ Bell said, God had answered the prayer of the original three ministers in a way they could not have expected. If we ask anything according to his will, he answers in his own unique way and time. Praying in accord with the will of the God presumes that we are praying in Jesus' name because we are seeking his purpose. Brian Campbell, praying backwards. Community is Family by Brent Lasma, Saturday, May 9th, 2020. Scripture reading, Matthew 12, 46 to 50. Pointing to his disciples, Jesus said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Matthew 5, 49. Ashley has a great family, an extended family, that she is very close to, both geography and emotionally. But she is also a part of other communities that she considers family. Her class at school has grown close through a few tragedies and difficult times that have afflicted them greatly. The poor and swim club, the pool and swim club that she has been a part of for 10 years is also a big part of her life. And she loves her church and youth group and at times that she can spend with them. She feels cared for and loved in all these communities Though both times, through both good times and bad times, Jesus gathered a group. Jesus gathered a close group of disciples around him, who became the family to him. They shared monumental events and quiet downtimes together. They shared a God-given passion for living in the kingdom of God. And while Jesus, no doubt, loved his earthly mother and brothers, he loved his community of disciples, followers, and friends as well. 
With whom are you surrounding yourself? What communities are you a part of that are like family to you, loving you unconditionally and supporting you in both good times and bad times? Whom do you share life with? It is important for each of us to have a family around us to do life together. Father, help us find to share life with as a family community. Amen. May 9th, Signs of Life. We know that we have passed from death to life because we loved a brother. In early ages, it was often hard to determine when someone had actually died. Books of historical oddities are filled with accounts of people accidentally buried alive. Hans Christian Andersen was so petrified by the prospect that he kept a sign by his bed bearing the words, I am not really dead. Tainer Auguste Wiener insisted doctors do whatever was necessary to prove he was dead before burial. George Washington told attendants to keep his body above ground for three days before burial. According to scripture, those without Christ are spiritually dead, but those who know him are alive. If we're alive, there should be signs of life. People should instantly see that we're living in Christ. There should be no mistake about it. We should bear evidence of Christ's life, a love that consumes us, a joy that sustains us, a hope that brightens our outlook, and purity that maintains our holiness, and a commitment that makes others want to follow our Savior. It's a tragedy when people don't know if we're dead or alive in Christ. Let the world know you're alive. May 9th, no sting. O oh death, where is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15:55. Dr. M. R. Deanhan, who died in 1965, was a gospel radio pioneer who remained hard at work even on his deathbed. Surrounded by his Bible and writing materials, he was preparing materials for his broadcast when at about 5.30 p.m. he asked for an oxygen mask, but it was too late. Suddenly he was gone. Afterwards, his friends recalled something he'd written. We read of the world's great men when they come home. How the crowds are waiting, the cannons saluting, the flags wave, waving. But that, my friend, is nothing compared to the thrill of dying for the believing Christian. To come home to leave these odd clods of clay to be loosed from the earth, to say goodbye to all that hinders, and then surrounded by heavenly hosts, be carried by the angels amid shouts of triumph of the saints in heaven, awaiting us in all the innumerable company of angels. When one thinks on this, one may well explain with Paul, O oh, death, where is thy sting? Jesus rose to remove the fear of death and prepare a place for us. Why should we dread such an adventure by eternity with him waiting for us? Ezekiel 6 Doom for the mountains 
the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against the mountain of Israel. Prophesy against them and say, the mountains of Israel, hear the word of the southern Lord. This is what the southern Lord says to the mountain and hills, to the ravines and valleys. I am about to bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished, and your incense altars will be smashed. And I will slay your people in front of your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the Israelites in front of their idols, and I will scatter your bones around your altars. Wherever you live, the towns will be laid waste, and the high places demolished, so that your altars will be laid waste and devastated, your idols smashed and ruined, your incense altars broken down, and what you have made wiped out. Your people will fall slain among you, and you will know that I am the Lord. But I will spare some, for some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the lands and nations. Then in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me, how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me, and by their eyes, which have lusted after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices. And they will know that I am the Lord. I did not threaten in vain to bring this calamity on them. This is what the Southern Lord says. Strike your hands together and stamp your feet and cry out, Alas! because of all the wicked and detestable practices of the people of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, family and plague. One who is far away will die of the plague, and one who is near will fall by the sword, and anyone who survives is spared will die of famine. So will I pour out my wrath on them, and they will know that I am the Lord. When your people lie slain among their idols, around their altars, on every high hill, and on all the mountaintops, under every spreading tree and every leafy oak, places where they offered fragrant incense to all their idols, and I will stretch out my hand against them, and make the land a desolate waste, from the desert to Bibla, wherever they live, then they will know that I am the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this devotion. Thank you for words coming straight from your Bible, from Ezekiel. Chapter, thir- chapter 6. Lord, once again, I have my full request for my family, all of them, pour out your wisdom on them so that they will not take your eyes off you for the people I went to school with and their families and extended families, pour out your wisdom on them so that they will not take their eyes off me. For the friends I got on Facebook I've never met, and their extended family, families, pour out your wisdom on them. Now, as my request, thank you, Lord. Three days now. Since I last did that major sin. I'm happy for that, but I'm trying to set a record. Be with me as we go through the day and every second pour that wisdom on me. 
that I may not sin against you. Thank you. And now, be with us as we go through your day. We love you, Lord. Amen.